By July 2021, a person who we're going to call Nadia had already sold tens of thousands of dollars of wet sticks. Now, she attempted to manipulate the plant market. What was once an $8 plant was now a $23,000 plant. This is a story of scams, theft, price manipulation, and greed. All for a plant that might not even be the true Monstera Obliqua. Our story begins in 1844 when Dutch botanist Mikkel describes a new species of Araceae as having unequal leaves obliquely oblong. It grows on Surinamese trees with fruit. So off we go to Suriname. These are the obliqua that were first described having almost no fenestrations. And in Michael Madison's revision of Monstera, he shows a leaf resembling something like an Epiprenum pinnatum without fenestrations. This is mounting evidence that the originally discovered obliqua might not have fenestrations. Here's Mick Mitty showing a specimen from Suriname and pointing out that this might be the true holotype of obliqua. And this is the trouble with obliqua. It seems as that tens of species have been grouped under the same species name obliqua. And these are all of the specimens that exist in Central and Southern America under the name obliqua. But these are the ones you know as obliqua, which is the Peruvian form. Or you might know it as this one if you got swindled, unfortunately. So let's take a look down in Peru and see what we find. Here are a couple that look like the cutting we've had floating around for years. They've got lots of fenestrations and have been collected by none other than Tom Crote of Missouri Botanical Garden. Tom made an appearance in our last video auctioning off the Spiritus Sancti. Tom Crote took most of these samples from Iquitos, Peru in August 1972. And these obliqua cuttings are cultivated at Nancy Botanical Garden in France. They were originally collected from Pebas, Peru, just down the Amazon from Iquitos. Lots of these obliqua with the fenestrations come right off of the Amazon River. As we've seen, there's lots of versions of obliqua. Most are given a name from where they are discovered, such as Bolivian, Surinamese, Peruvian, among others. As usual, most of these specimens came to U.S. collectors in the 90s and early 2000s via Marie Selby Botanical Gardens. Enid Fulter was again one of the few collectors who owned the Peruvian form of the obliqua in the early days. Another collector was the late Tim Anderson of Palm Hammock Orchid Estate in Florida. This nursery pioneered mail-order plants, as you can see from the 2014 availability list. For the price of $25, you could have a strawberry shake sent to you, then called raspberries and cream, or even $55 for a philodendron Florida beauty sent directly to your door. As evidenced by these prices, the obliqua wasn't a heavily sought after plant before 2015. In fact, this YouTube comment shows obliqua used to sell for $8 per cutting in 2007. I've heard this story corroborated many different times. But these cheap prices wouldn't last. From 2005 to 2015, the price remained around $100, being sold primarily at the International Aeroid Show. Always thought to be a finicky plant, many growers complained of the slow growing nature and high humidity requirements, which would fit the average humidity level of Loreto, Peru. By 2017, we were entering the first stage of the plant bubble, frenzy. The obliqua was gaining more popularity and many houseplant buyers were being scammed into buying Adansonii instead of actual obliqua. Hashtags such as Fobliqua and it's never obliqua gained traction as more people were confused by the two perforated plants. The stolones or runners are a dead giveaway for the obliqua, as well as the thinner rippled leaves. The petioles and stems are also much more delicate on the obliqua. Prices continued north through 2018. We are officially in a plant boom. Hype continued before the plant breaking an all-time sales record in the euphoria of 2020. An LA plant seller auctioned his bushy obliqua in December 2020 and received a max bid of $23,000. He had originally received the plant from Mick Mitty a few years before this. He grew it out and planned a perfect exit from the plant market. The hype around Obliqua was at an all-time high. And I actually think that the final price of $23,000, oh, 
<laughs> for this plant is actually not unreasonable. I actually think it's quite fair. But this sale set off even more mania for the obliqua. All sellers wanted in on this. The plant demic was peaking and sellers were looking to cash in. Nodes or wet sticks were selling for between $500 and $1,000 regularly. A theft at the Huntington Botanical Garden also occurred at this time, where someone prop lifted a Bolivian form of the obliqua while volunteering there. Facebook groups popped up left and right as buying and selling avenues for plant collectors. Scammers targeted these Facebook plant groups to offer plants they didn't even have. Profit taking was well underway. A scammer was even caught selling wet sticks of Epiprenum during the height of the craze. By early 2021, with all the selling, the first cracks were starting to show in rare plant prices. Some sellers began to panic. Obliqua nodes that used to sell for $1,000 each now got between three and $500 each, which is still insane for a piece of a plant stem that is not even edible. One seller even had the audacity to turn down $1,500 for an unrooted runner from their obliqua, claiming their reserve was not met. A certain Facebook group admin had been cashing in on the obliqua's popularity, as well as other aeroids all through 2020 and 2021, regularly auctioning pieces of the stem for $750. When more sellers began entering the market, supply naturally increased and this dropped prices. The price drop clearly bothered this Facebook admin and she suggested, or rather, she forced that sales on the group be halted. Around July 2nd, 2021, this admin placed a temporary stop to all sales in the group, stating, there will be a temporary stop to all sale posts in the group. Let's all stop to smell the roses. Honestly, she should have just said obliqua. She continued, we all love obliqua and we can't devalue the species so fast, so much. She finishes with, Sales restriction will be lifted sometime in September. That's like a four month ban on selling. I mean, this is bold. If this isn't panic, I don't know what is. But I do think it's time we define what price fixing is. Illegal price fixing occurs when two or more competitors agree to take actions to change the price of a product. This is pretty much what OPEC does to change the worldwide gasoline price. Now, members of this group freaked out. And rightfully so. This is just morally sh but it did cause the highest Google search volume for Monstera Obliqua in the last five years, right when the scandal came out. I get it, plant prices were dropping, and some people paid big money for investment plants. Hell, I even bought a Albo Adansanii for close to $2,000 in the pandemic, and I lost all of that. But you just can't do this. Luckily, the admin promptly came to her senses and removed the post a few hours later. As of June 2023 in the United States, you can buy an obliqua for between $40 and $80. I bet that guy who turned down the $1,500 for his runner is kicking himself a bit. Obliqua is a very complicated species with a lot more work to be done on it. I think the more we learn about obliqua, the less we realize we know. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing for more videos like this one.